Hello and welcome to Lord Lucan. Time to pedal your dashings because we're off for some more love after lockup. Or, you know, life after lockup. And God knows what they're calling it these days. In today's episode, Chance is doing a bit of wooing. I've been really trying. And the first rule of Vegas Club is that you don't talk about Vegas Club. Just don't bring up Vegas. We're planning to move to Vegas. Then the metaphor police are out in full force. Did the tire just fall off? Then this guy turns up for a bit. Things will start off great, and then not go so great. Hello to you, you beautiful viewer. I have it on good authority that I'm still very much alive and kicking, which is pleasing. I would have been very upset to have woken up less alive than I was yesterday. I've been doing lots of fun things to share with you, including the dreaded YouTuber does the vlogging thing idea. See, look, look, look. Just because he wants his socks, he's letting all the warm air out. Look at that. Terrible. Terrible business. That is a red card for him. You are now expelled from and it keeps on Sports the door. Direct. It, he keeps on opening the door and it, they think that's how good he wants to go out. Yeah. No. Oh. Well, there's an odd couple, isn't it? Uh huh. It's like the number 10, isn't it? Or yeah. 01, I suppose, now. But, you know, we're working on that. Not sure about the whole live roosting innocent passers by, but, but hey, it's fun. And he was letting all the warm air out and, you know, looked a bit creepy. So there you go, really. It's just a sort of a Fortnite uh, bunker base uh, kind of deal is the idea. I mean, uh, if you want to build a bunker, I suppose you may as well just dig a hole in the garden, eh? <laughs> so here's the start of the, the bunker. Yeah, why not? Why not actually dig one? Anyway, enough of that. Those videos will be emerging from the fog sometime soon. Also stuff up films and a revamped membership. But rest assured, it'll be an increasingly interesting year for your viewing pleasure. A huge thank you as always to those who've subscribed and a massive selection of refined gin to the members of the Lucan Manor. Comment of the week last week, or you know, a couple of weeks ago, <coughs> but shh, don't mention that, was from Notorious. Do you all remember when Lucan moustache made no sense? Ah, uh, yes, a decent little bit of Lucan lore there. Anyway, right, first up in today's episode, we're off to Texas to see Shovel. Brought me a new shovel. And her hairline. And the man they call Kalon. But I'm always like, who, when I see her? This whole storyline is so boring. And Kalon looks like they race swapped Toad from Super Mario. Excited? Um... Me neither. Why were these people worth a bunch of airtime? Bloody filler couples. So this whole bit was like, hey look, check out this upset child for 10 minutes. Cause you know, we TV aren't above a bit of creative license with the offsprings from the cast. In fact, we all know they have the same standard reality TV contract, which hopefully lets you know that not only can they defame and lie about you for views, but they can also take your future earnings too. Lovely. I don't know if I gave it enough thought. I noticed you used the word thought there. Hmm, ambitious. Right, bored of that now, let's go and see what Professor Chance and Taylor are up to in Ellsbury Moo. Well, it looks like they're doing a bit of TikToky thing, you know, where you make a table out of a bit of tree and a bunch of resin. <laughs> but that turns out to be well good. And the conversation shifts to Chance's new busy mate. Bobo, you know, he, um... Now I would be terribly reminiscing my duties if I didn't do a quick little flashback to Bobo Gate. So grab your TARDIS with both hands, we're going in. Chance meets his new bum chum at a local bar for a bit of meet and greet. Oh, man, this ain't no meet and greet for me. Let's go outside and talk, me and you. Ah, okay, uh, maybe not then. Uh, so uh, I think Bobo would rather like to check out the back entry. So they move the party to the car park. Listen to me, man. Listen to me. I know, Bobo. I've been really trying. And big bad Professor Chance does the very manly thing of filling his underpants and pretending to cry. Sorry, bro. Hey, sorry. Look, I don't want you to be sorry. I don't want you to be sorry. It's okay. He's not going to take your lunch money. Look at him, though. He looks about 12. Standing there with his little skateboard. Yes, I know. It's not a skateboard. But this scene is so fakery fake pants. We're supposed to believe that this impromptu scene, which was covered by no less than four separate cameras, and took several takes, which Chance totally gives away because he keeps messing up the continuity with his hat, then ended up like this. Hey, man. Hey, get back the f*** up. Dude, I asked y'all to real, man. That's seriously. <laughs> sure. Okay. This was clearly done separately, as the director has cleared the shot of that other pesky cameraman who was getting the long reverse angle. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally genuine and totally not at all homoerotic. Gang, back the f*** up, man. I'm serious. All right. All right. 
Ooh, scary. So anyway, John's owed a grand, so he borrowed a grand from a limo business guy, fixed it for now, and is currently using some epoxy resin in an enclosed space. Great idea. Those three brain cells of his weren't busy anyway. Oh, and a small electrical farm's worth of air conditioners. So with the price of epoxy, electrical costs, and shipping alone, that would make this project another one of Chance's whoop de doo moneymakers. But we're not just here for the entrepreneurship, you know. No, no, no. Class is in for Chance's Charm School 101. We need to be, I want to be more romantic. You deserve it. Translation, I want sexy time. For Chance, bullshit is a love language and he's getting to some flinging. Okay. Yeah. So Chance takes that as a dead cert and quickly shakes hands on it to get it in the bag. Come on, I got a surprise for you. It's gonna be Bobo, isn't it? Just wearing some chaps and a menacing grin. But the S word strikes fear into the hearts of all that are watching, as we await to see whatever passes for surprise. Um. Ah, yeah, lovely, yeah. I particularly like the chauffeur's outfit. Classic. But how much? Did that cost? Cost? No, oh, don't you worry. I didn't go wasting a bunch of money rimping a cheap banged up old limo. No, no, I invested a bit of debt in the bloody thing. That's that's much smarter. I'm not sure how much you pay for a shitbox 90s limo like this one. But over here in England land, you can pick up one of these for a little less than 20 large. And you just don't want to know what's been going on in there, do you? Creepy. Did the tire just fall off? Yeah, it'll be fine. When you reach a certain age, they call bits falling off refinement. No, this thing's a tank, girl. He says, looking out of the window to see a tire overtaking the car. But yeah, it's tanked, you know, as in they've been blown up by a bunch of tanks from the 90s. Listen to that motor, you hear that? Yeah. That's a muscle motor, girl. Firstly, stop it with the girl thing. Secondly, yes, hearing the engine wasn't really the issue, it was more the worry of whether it may have decided to leave of its own accord. But Taylor's not on board with this idea and she tries to take a big step back. I think we should, like, start way back there. Uh, uh, maybe I'll get the message now. Uh, let's have a look. More like a party band? N no. No, no chance, not a bloody party bus. So, for what is probably the 59th million time, Taylor suggests an alternative plan. Focus on, like, our family and our kids and... and <laughs> family? Well, that's no fun. That's not like hanging around in limos and stuff. Other things that are a bit like not hanging out in limos and stuff are Chance and Taylor, who, rather than chilling in the limo, perch awkwardly on the trunk instead. In conversation, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I bet it looks just as good out the window of a comfy limo, but, uh, you know, well, never mind. But she did get a date out of it, and yeah, he may have just took a limo to chuck a chicken, then made her sit on the spare. But I guess that's a date of, you know, sorts, I guess. Right, that's enough of these two for now. Let's go down to the Mills's, Juju and Moo Moo. And I love how easily Mills gets distracted. Do my There you go, that'll be the Mills's new track. Mocker would go ahead and produce it, but he's uh, busy pretending not to milk mature single women for thousands of dollars in lies and fake promises. And you know, that old Mocker story doesn't really go away. Got interviewed by this lady just the other day. Can't say why, uh, but uh, I'm sure she certainly will. Anyway, something about Vegas. And we've yet to tell them that we're moving to Vegas. Ah, oh, yes, they've turned up to say hi, and uh, oh, by the way, I'm moving to Vegas. See you later. Let's see how that works out for them. Me and the family are moving to Las Vegas. What? Yeah, it'll be fine. Clearly this is the best idea since leaving everything in God's hands. Rhode Island. No. no. I'm out. And we'll be back later on to see how all that goes. Next, a quick stop to see how nice but dim Louis is doing. And he's off to an interview. And seems to be also pleased to meet himself. Oh, okay, great, yeah. Good Crunch. to meet you. Me too. Yeah. But when nice but dim lets the employer know about his past, things start to change. I just recently was released from prison. Okay. It's nice, oh, okay, to start with. Okay. Then Louis says, I had committed an armed robbery. And I don't know if you can detect it, but there's a subtle shift in the employer's tone. In fact, you can hear the weights moving around when he moves his head forward. Louis it is a bit of a weird gym anyway. This guy back here is working out in his jeans. And what the hell's going on with this guy in his jacket? Weirdly reading a book in the corner. 
strange place. And that's another Louis for this week. His missus, old flashback Rachel, was in it too, but you know, nobody really cares about that. Let's go back to the mills. All that news is difficult to digest for the family. Us as a family, but especially Michael and his music. His music? His $10 music career <laughs> he thinks is about acting like you make music. Yeah, yeah that's, that's really worth breaking everybody's heart for. And things that he's been, you know, deprived of for a really long time, so. Deprived? What is he deprived of? Love? A father figure? Time and attention? Oh, oh no, no, wait, 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 no, that's, that's his kids. But that doesn't matter. It's all about a half assed low-budget fake music persona that no one cares about. It reminds me of one of those delightful little thinky things that you get on Instagram. In particular, the one where people are asked who they'd most like to have dinner with. If you could have dinner with anyone, living or dead, who would you choose? And he gets some sort of, you know, usual kinds of answers. Kim Kardashian. How on earth was that Kim Kardashian? I, I mean, really, it's Australia, not Outer Mongolia. No, no, no. I'd like to have dinner with Justin Bieber. I'd have Bob Hawke. Dave Hughes. Barry Humphreys. Jimi Hendrix. And of course, there's a virtue signalling one, you know. People who have made a difference in the world, maybe Nelson Mandela at the dinner table. There's always one, isn't there? Pfft. Then they ask the kids who they'd like to have dinner with. If you could have dinner with anyone in the world, oh. who would you choose? And the answer is so charmingly simple and has lived in my head ever since. Mum and Dad? Mum and Dad. Does it have to be a celebrity? Could it be family? Some people are programmed to chase greatness and feel like it's their life purpose, which is fine. But when you've finished staring at the clouds and you look down towards those little eyes that are on you, they'll always see a hero and they'll always see greatness. And it's easy to forget that when you perceive your value as that which is reflected back to your vanity, you also forget what a hero looks like and how you look through the eyes of your children. In life, the only followers that matter are those that look up at you like you are the night sky. But Mills and Co have just gone and shut the curtain. Can we come with you? Sorry, Zander. Yeah, this is Daddy's pipe dream. Maybe you can have a dream of your own one day. But just not right now, you know, because uh, Mummy and Daddy are recklessly selfish and you're not genetically juju enough to matter. What's wrong? Oh, yeah, nothing. Just a perpetual rejection and attachment issues. You know, nothing scarring for life or anything. Michael, what do you mean what's wrong? She's going to be crying. She's your kid and you're moving. I'm not that. Exactly. Surely they predicted this would happen. It's hard to see the kids cry and suffer again. But it's not the Mills' fault for all this upset, you know. It's everybody else's fault for not reacting in the appropriate fashion. This is why it's, 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 it's hard for us. Because of stuff like this. How dare you cry and get upset because I'm choosing to leave you this time rather than having to leave you like last time. So selfish of you denying me my opportunity to read my phone in front of at least 12 people in a $2 venue. <laughs> Kids, eh? Oh, oh, and they didn't bother talking to the baby more either. Great job, Millsy. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I mean... And they're still gonna do it. My whole life's like very mouthy to boo-boo. My mom too. <laughs> Just for a moment, put yourself here. See this face. This gorgeous little sad face. And if that wasn't enough to make you reconsider, then you, my friend, are a cold person. The only thing I've, I've thought about was... You, you, and, uh, you know, maybe a bit more you. But no, maybe he has thought of something. Let's see what genius he has in store. I was flying in once a month, and then dumb, dumb flying in to see us once a month. Ah, twice a month, father of the year. And with the next baby on the way, do you think they'll stick to that? Jumping on a plane with family and baby? We shall see. But I gotta do this. It'll, it'll make sense later. It will if the network decide it will. Their life is now the property of a massive company. Their life isn't their own anymore. Maybe he's hinting that he's actually being a martyr to the storyline. And he's sacrificing their kid's happiness for a shot at the mediocre time. My hero. Maybe he's hinting that it's all part of a storyline he's contractually obliged to be part of and the truth will come out one day. Who knows? I'm scared to lose more time with my kids. I'm scared for my kids to continue to grow without me. And does that change anything? But this is my calling. Nope, of course not. Then the show cuts to Louis again. I uh, know nobody cares about that. Let's go back to see what Chance and Taylor are up to. And since we saw them last, Chance isn't at the house anymore. Why is that, Taylor? So I got on there and there was 171 messages between them in one day. Whoops, uh, I must have been sleep texting again. I've been sleep doodling. <laughs> and what kind of rubbish does Chance have to say on the matter? I want to go to work, pay my bills, build my empire. My empire. 
empire of dirt. And have tranquility at home, peace and solitude. Yeah, all he wants to do is exactly what he wants to do. But people keep coming around exposing his lies and showing him up to be a total ass the whole time. I mean, the cheek of it. Can't someone just cheat in peace anymore? So, what's the big story, Chance? So I was texting with um, what I thought was Taylor. Okay, so he thought he was texting Taylor. How did he not know if he was texting his significant other? But you know, shh, don't ask questions. So Taylor tries to entrap me. Ah, I see. It's just a little preemptive as excuse. So he thinks Taylor tries to catch him in the honeypot via text. Therefore, he thought it was Taylor who texted him. Therefore, it's fine. Genius, because even though he didn't know it was Taylor, it might have been. Therefore, he texts back 70 odd times. And let me guess, it's Taylor's fault because she catfished him once. Trying to catch you at cheating? Yeah, that's correct. And does she usually catch you cheating? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> Therefore, it's Taylor's fault for catching you? Yeah, that's correct. I didn't make fake profiles to try to catfish him. No, I bet she did, you know, or a sister did, or someone she knows did. If she tracks his phone, she's definitely not beyond a little fishing trip. But while the cameras were away, they missed him throwing his phone in the toilet. Phone was literally in the toilet. Like, I left it there and everything. Why would you leave it actually in there, though? I hope they have other toilets in the house. Surely we all know what a phone in a toilet looks like. We didn't have to leave it in there to be filmed by the crew once they'd flown in. But no, 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 clearly did. It's like when my mom is looking after my old flat one day and my kitten pooped on the floor. When I got home, she took me to it, then said that she left it on the floor so that she could show me that there was a poop on the floor. Well, uh, cheers, yeah, that, uh, I would have taken your word for it, but uh, maybe some people would lie, you know, about poop on the floor. Anyway, I imagine Chance would totally lie about the poop, and the poopy, and the floor that was pooped on. What I found, I never expected that, ever. Oh, I wonder what she found. I mean, if even Taylor wasn't expecting it, that's got to be pretty serious. Yeah, no idea. I guess we'll have to wait to find out what all that means. Never. Totally unconnected is this clip. Eric Weihenmayer, who climbed the highest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. But he's gay. I mean, he's gay. Excuse me. He's blind. So we'll hear about that. So what's happening over the discount Kira Knightley today? Well, she's telling us some jail stories about some healthcare. 14 day time period, she put in 11 sick calls and was turned around at the door each and every time. I believe they call that the premium service in prison, when someone actually answers a health call. In an hour, she died. Well, not really, you told us it took 14 days and an hour. But we won't point that out. Anyway, today we're off to have a right good look at Discount Kira's vagina. Now just try to relax your legs just a little. And I do see your strings. Man, that's enough that little fiasco. Man, that's a, that little fiasco for one day. What do you think the Mills disease is up to after the meeting with this parole guy? There was a paper that was supposed to be signed then, but we never got it. Ooh, that'll better slide damper on things. It could take anywhere from 30 to 90 days, and, and you know. Well, some people could do a lot in 90 days, uh, you yeah, know, or not. I wonder if Juju has let him have his own balls long enough to be able to use them. <laughs> Hi, babe. Oh, 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 it's the boss. Quick, look busy. How'd everything go? <sighs> you know, it went well. Everything went well. Yeah, because, you know, parole always call you in immediately when things are going really well. They'd love to give you a little pat on the back, you know. But, no, no, there's no balls here today. Oh, my God. I can't. I can't tell her over the phone. I can't. Well, let's leave him wallowing in all this loving family. And head back to Ellsbury. And it's all coming out in the wash for Chauncey Poo. I was under the impression that it was probably a girl. But it turns out he's a rather friendly fella from the neighborhood who apparently likes to enjoy himself in the company of other fellows. He is pretty much just like the hell of the town. I have no issue whatsoever with who, what, or where Chance is inserting himself. That's really not the issue. Well, aside from it being one more massive thing that he's hiding from her. And I wouldn't care if you told me he'd like to be called Susan and wear heels on a Wednesday. I would actually believe it if you told me that, but I'd also not have a problem with that. The issue is the constant lies and charades. And as Taylor says... Being friends with girls and stuff behind my back, but now I have to worry about guys too. I think Charles was rather looking forward to having a good man behind his back. Well then, mon petit bois, this is where the episode ends, and that's where we're going to terminate this little train for today. 
Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to see you as always. I hope you'll come back for more or check out one of these little beauties. So until we meet again, stay beautiful. Love to my three. You take care of yourself. <laughs>